Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Simon Park here in London, ahead of the UK press conference for a historic night at Madison Square Garden on June the 1st, live on Sky Sports box office, live on the zone, when Anthony Joshua defends his WBO, IBF, WBA and IBO world heavyweight titles against American Jarrell Miller, as I said, Madison Square Garden. Um, he's supported me as a woman in this boxing business. He's been by my side, and for that, I'll forever be his corner. Um, he's improved every single fight. Uh, he, was, he started out as a kickboxer. Uh, he came up in the rankings, not through the amateurs, but through the pros. He came up the hard way. He didn't have all the accolades Joshua did. But there's one thing that uh, Jarrell has that you can't teach a fighter, and that's how to take a punch, how to have a great chin. He's never touched that canvas. He's been kicked to the head and not gone down. I've recently seen Joshua in New York City partying with Danny Jacobs, looking for condos. And that's cool. You know, everybody wants to be in New York City. New York City is where dreams are made. You know, Madison Square Garden is the mecca of boxing. I get it. But with all that being said, DAZN, Barack, you can give them all the Yankee fitted caps. You can give him the Timberland boots. That's not going to help him June 1st. <laughs> There's going to be a new heavyweight champ, and he's going to be from my borough, the best borough, Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dimitri, um, me and you have been talking for many years now about Jerome Miller. You told me many years ago he was going to be the guy to beat Anthony Joshua, and June the 1st, you made it happen. Maybe ahead of schedule. A little bit, but it's on, and you believe you have the man to be triumphant at Madison Square Garden. Thank you, Eddie. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Eddie Matrum, all the people behind the scenes that are making this fight happen. Uh, Jarrell's trainers, Harry and Aralana Sosa, of course, Alvina Alston, our team publicist, uh, Greg Cohen Promotions, Sarah. It's a great honor to be here today, and of course, I want to thank the fighters, Jarrell Miller and Anthony Joshua. Anthony is putting his mouth where, money where his mouth is and traveling all the way to the United States to fight what I believe is the toughest fight of his career in Madison Square Garden in New York City. <clears throat> uh, Joel has been pro since 2011. Over the last 18, month, 18 months, he's made great strides, being the busiest top heavyweight in the world and beating the best available contenders in a very impressive fashion. Sometimes, seemingly opposite forces exist in great fighters and they do in Jarrell. He's incredibly big, incredibly athletic, incredibly fast, incredibly active in the ring, and that is why I believe that Jarrell is the toughest opponent that Anthony Joshua has faced to date. Anthony Joshua, as of today, is the best heavyweight in the world, and he will be until May 31st. But on June 1st, in Madison Square Garden, New York City, the new king will be crowned from Brooklyn, New York, following in the footsteps of Riddick Bone Mike Tyson. Jarrell Miller will be the new heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. We're going to move to Jarrell shortly. Before we do that, we're going to pass to Rob McCracken, MBE. Rob, um, a new test for Anthony, new territories, 
Um, it's exciting times. He was out in New York next week, uh, last week. But as I said, a new territory in, in Madison Square Garden in New York and a tough challenge in Jarrell Miller. Yeah, he's got a real good challenger. This is what every weight boxing is all around about the best fighting the best. But and and you'll look forward to it. I mean, he won the Olympic Games gold when he was a relative novice internationally, and he's just moved on very quickly from there. Well, he can really fight, as you know. Um, he's had some real good opposition in the professionals. He's all he's already on a real good learning trajectory. It's going to see him do what he needs to do in the sport the next three or four years, which is become undisputed and um, maybe do something else with his life. I keep telling him, but he keeps laughing at me, so we'll see. But um, yeah, he's a phenomenal fighter, a phenomenal talent, and he hasn't had nothing easy, I can assure you. And there's this myth that AJ's had everything put on a play. I took him to the Oxide tournament in Hungary when he was a complete novice. And he drew the Russian and the Uzbek first two fights with a tiny ring. And he was a novice, he had no business being there. And he beat both of them. And ever since then, he's got something that you, know, you just don't see in other fighters. You'll see that on June the 1st as well. Great challenger, great fight this will be, but you know, Anthony will be ready and he will deliver on the night. Obviously a, a new challenge in the venue as well, but a new challenge in Jerome Miller in terms of the size of this opponent as well and, and trying to prepare for, for something that Anthony's never faced before in that respect. Yeah, he's, he's, he's big and he's, he, he's good. He can box a bit, he can fight, but um, you know, he'll adjust Anthony. I remember him boxing Kuzman in, in, in the tournament. I think he boxed Kuzman in the, in the box side tournament, Josh yeah. did. And Kuzman's a big guy as well, but obviously in general, he, you know, he can box a bit, he's got a good boxing IQ, he knows what he's doing, he's well schooled in the time that he's been a fighter. But, you know, he's stepping up and he's stepping up with somebody who hasn't achieved all this for nothing. You know, you, you sometimes listen to people talking and, and, you know, I just think, my God, because to achieve what he's achieved and to beat the people that he's beaten um, in his short journey and already to be where he's at, he, ha he has to be a little bit special and he doesn't underestimate the opponents. He knows how hard boxing is. Anyone can upset you if you take them lightly, but he won't take anything lightly. He'll train diligently, he'll train hard, he'll prepare as best as possible. And, you know, he's, he's like what you need in pay-per-view boxing. He understands the business, he wants to entertain as well. So winning's one thing, but obviously entertaining and with your first fight in the US, it's a big night for him, but it's not one that will phase him. He'll be ready, he'll be prepared, and, and he'll deliver the performance on June 1st. Jerome, welcome to the UK again. You've been here a few times now, and now you're sitting here just a few months away from challenging for the World Unified Heavyweight Championship at Madison Square Garden. UK, what's up? Uh, in a, I guess better mood, you can say. I had, some, I had a cup of tea, and uh, you know, I'm just chill, man. I already said what I had to say. Uh, yeah, I know how I feel about AJ. Um, yeah, I know my backstory. I know where I come from and where we're going. Um, it was a blessing to be here. Um, I just can't wait for June 1st. You know, thanks to my team, uh, thanks to my new manager, Will Wasserman, and uh, you know, all the UK fans is gonna tune in and giving me support. And uh, you know, we gonna do the thing, man. And uh, I've been hearing it from the fans themselves. You know, they say AJ's too posh. His nose is up here sometimes, you know. I mean, I, you don't give two licks about him right now at this point to me. It's, you know, for the underdogs, you know, so all the underdogs out there that, that you know, people tell me not good enough or they're too fat or whatever the discreet that people want to discriminate against you, don't listen to them, just keep pushing, man, because I'm a proven factor that with hard work, dedication, you know, one or two cheeseburgers and a cup of tea, you can go real far. And, um, you know, let's go to work June 1st, it's going to be fireworks, and it will be that saying I love so much. And you got that smirk on your face, man. And the new, and I can't wait. So tune in June 1st on the zone for 999 and see me kick some butt. Jarrell, we saw the uh, we saw the bad blood last week, but from a boxing perspective, what is it that you see that makes you think you'll be victorious on June the 1st? That's the problem. You think, I don't think, I don't even think. I just get it done. You know. The way my mentality is set is that any task in front of me, I just go, what's the word I could use? Being PG 13, I don't know sometimes. The English fans they don't like that they're, they're bragging muffin style, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little break today. But uh, you gotta go balls to balls, man. There's no turning back. There's no if and buts about it. If I ever doubted myself one step of the way, 
I would not have made it this far. We're going to continue to keep going forward. We're going to continue to work hard. And the game plan to stop is behind the seven rounds, point blank period. Like I said, my mental focus on Brown is unmatched, period. And finally, to follow in the footsteps of some Brooklyn greats to win the World Heavyweight Championship, what would it mean to you personally? Oh, I mean, winning the title is, 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 means a whole lot. But like I said before, we know we're going to win the title. The title is one step greater to what we want to accomplish in the future. And that's to change life, help change countries, do positive things in the community and around the world. And just being a real model, not a role model, you know, not put makeup on and pretend to be something that I'm not. You know, so winning the title, yes, is, is the main goal right now. But we know that we're looking in the future to do amazing things around the world and just be an ambassador of uh, the human race, and that's what we want to do. Thank you, Jerome. Anthony, welcome back from your trip to the States. It was a lively week. I think you enjoyed yourself out there. It's something very, very different. And now, just a few weeks away from beginning camp for a very important part and chapter in your career. Yeah, New York was 10 out of 10, no lie, but there's nothing like being back on UK soil, getting my head down, and I get back in routine and regimen, and that's how I like living my lifestyle in a regimen format. I focus on what I've got ahead of me, really, and uh, that's Gerard Miller. You know, I'm not fighting none of his team members or anyone that can speak for him, I'm just fighting him. And there won't be much words being said in that ring except for punches being exchanged, and it's just a battle of the fittest, battle of the smartest, and the last man will be standing. We saw for the first time last week you in a slightly different mindset and approach at the press conference. Do you enjoy that? Normally, you know, I love it. That's what I live for every day. Um, it's just another opponent. You need a dancing partner, right? You need a dancing partner, and Jarrell's a good dancing partner. And uh, I'm only champion until June 1st. That's when I put a guy out there to the battlefield and defend my stripes. And then June 2nd, Jarrell will be irrelevant, and then I step forward onto the next task ahead of me. So. It was a good time in New York. Danny Jacob showed me love, came out, looked after me. Um, I met some of the New York people, radio stations. We went out there to Cobra, New York for a week. And we had a real good time. Just following on Rob's comments earlier, a lot of people suggest that you've been you know, given these opportunities. You know, on, on. Uh, look, look, I come from a great family. My mother raised me well, my father raised me well, my aunties and uncles, my cousins, my brothers and sisters. We all looked after each other. Uh, my cousin was fighting at the time. I got banned from the area I grew up in, getting in too much trouble, moved out of the area. Um, like, I sat down at boxing when I used to drive my cousin because I was, I was making money, so I had the car back then. So uh, I'd pick him up, take him to training, and I'd sit back and I used to think that looks easy. Um, he lent me 25 pound, it was that like $30. I went and bought a pair of boxing boots. He brought me some shorts, I started training. I got building up a bit. And then from that point forward, I realized, do I want to smoke, drink, uh, face the verge of jail, or do I want to focus on boxing? And when I used to get, if you look at my, the state of my hands, this ain't from boxing, this is from street fighting. So I just used to realize, do I want to kind of get in trouble for fighting on the streets? Or I realized I used to get a pat on the back for fighting when I boxed, I stuck with boxing. As I said, boxing to me ain't about Jerome Miller, ain't about Tyson Fury or Dylan it's about me. What does it make me as a person? So I changed my whole lifestyle around. I've changed my family's lifestyle. And now we're impacting the community. We're one of my friends over there. We've got some real good plans to kind of take some positivity to the, to the community. And uh, that's what it means to me. Like when we first turned pro, me and Rob used to train in your garden. We didn't have no gym. We were just training in the garden on the, on the grass, in the heat, and just grind it out really. So I think because um, I sit myself down, I look in the mirror, uh, there's, as I said, Gerard said, there's no makeup, no fantasies, just reality, hard working, smart working, um, strategic planning that got us to where we are today. It looks easy. But that's what the, the people who are great make tough tasks look easy, right? And that's what we've been doing the whole way through. Everyone talks about how difficult this business is. We're in the same business. I'm not in no different business to what anyone else is going through, but we just, we just calculate every step and uh, move forward. I never complain, never cry. When Rob was chucking me in there with Olympic champions, two-time world medalists, when I'd only been boxing a year, year and a half, I had to swim deep. I didn't get chucked in the shallow end. Like, I weren't no part-time kickboxer or boxer. I went straight to boxing and I took over the game. And that's just what I continued to do. And I was thinking about it today on my way here. 
I still got 10 years left. I know Rob wants me to cut that short, but no, no, no. This is all I know. This is all I do. As I said, I don't know no football, no rugby, no NFL, no basketball, no kickboxing. I know how to knock people out and beat them up. And all that spirit that this boy's got over there talking his shit, I'm going to strip him from him. Every ounce of spirit he's got, that's what I do to people. I'm going to strip him of his soul in that ring. Talk about seven rounds, I'll still be in there fighting strong. And if he's still in there, look at his face. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconstruct his face on June 1st. I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Finally, you answered my question, but uh, the spite from you, the spite you say Jarrell Miller is irrelevant. Is there a, a spite aspect from you wanting to go in there and, and do a job? I do the job. Um, and then I'm a good boxer, heavy handed puncher. I've beaten better opponents than, every heavyweight, than any heavyweight out there. Um, and Jarrell, I'm going to just reconstruct his face and his body uh, June 1st. I'm looking forward to it. So, landlord in the States. Surgeon, I'm going to be your surgeon in the UK because I'm going to give him a new makeover. Thank you, Anthony. We're going to pass to Sky Sports News, I believe, who have some questions. Of your opponents, um, Jarrell says he's never been knocked down. He's been kicked in the face as a kickboxer and right, never been knocked right, down. Right, 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 right. He got no <laughs> Do you do you need to not only knock him down but knock him out over yeah. there to make a point? Hundred percent. Knock him clean up, 100%. Because obviously it's going to be, uh, there'll be lots of Brits there, but uh, there'll be lots of his fans there as well. Yeah, I said I want a lot of New York fans there as well because it just shows that we're kind of, that people doubt it. That's when we took this fight in the States and they discredited Jerome Miller saying that he's not popular, I ain't got nothing going on in the States. This ain't the fight that people want to see. We're going to struggle to kind of do numbers in MSG, but we flipped that upside down and it's been a great promotional journey so far. And with that being said, um, as you said, a knockout needs to happen as well to kind of announce myself in the States because he does all the talking outside of it. And then um, I'll do the physical stuff in it. And when I go in there and do business, it kind of makes people realize that I'm a, I'm a force to be reckoned with. Uh, uh, big baby, are you uh, gonna be ready to cope with a, a very, very loud, British contingent, maybe 10,000 Brits on your back? This ship was born. Tell me time. I was going to say there's going to be a lot of AJ fans at Madison Square Garden. Very, very loud, very, very partisan as well. Are you ready for that? Man, I'm ready for anything, man. The odds has always been against me. Like I said, man, the fans can't fight for him. That facial can't fight for him. You know, biting his nails can't fight. All that nervousness, all that bullshit hype talk, can't fight for him. You know what I mean? Like, this is, what, this is what I've been doing. This is what, that's where I came from. So, like I said before, he's not the popular one no more. I come to the UK, I'm, I'm swearing I'm here at age I'm here at Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury now. You know, he come to New York, 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 he come to he says he's going to reconstruct your face, but that make you as pretty as him. There's not much I can really do to that face, but he's definitely going to reconstruct it. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm a handsome brother, and I know what I can do, so trust me. I know a couple of girls around here, I can snatch a roof. That's a lie. Like I said, I'll give you the website. Hey, like I said, we don't make it. Listen. All the, all the meat cows he be eating, bro. This this beef right here, you better get ready for it. That's all I'm saying. Ready? All right. Slow cooked. Uh, whatever. Slow cooked. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, you two, for almost behaving, and uh, thank you for an exceptional turnout today. I know I know I know I scared Adam Smith, man. He, uh, he's been a good guy. So. I mean, I we like Adam's faces. We like playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know, you don't want to hurt him. No worries, no worries. Guys, um, just touching on something that Adam said as well. We're going to make this a very, very special night. We've got some major announcements coming in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have the British and Irish on completely one side of this card at MSG. It's going to be a night you will never ever forget. We thank you for all your support here today and in the build up to this fight as well. Um, all the guys are going to be available for one on ones and uh, obviously in the se separate selected media areas. And we're going to have 
a face to face up here now on the stage. Thank you for coming. We'll see you soon.